exploring the interplay of competition and cooperation in evolution. Throughout the history of life on Earth, individuals that could most successfully survive and reproduce were more likely to pass on their genes than their less successful peers. This led to new generations of individuals that were increasingly successful at surviving and reproducing within their environment. The imperative to survive and reproduce may at first seem focused on self-interest. If this is the case, however, then how did cooperation evolve, both amongst individuals of the same species and between different species? Scientist Dr. Egbert Lee has spent decades reflecting on the role of cooperation in evolution. His research shows that working together has been key to the success of multicellular life on Earth, leading to the diverse ecosystems we see today. Dr. Lee's research begins with our genes. His work shows that although genes can be considered selfish in that they are programmed to reproduce themselves, they also depend on the other genes in the organism's genome because a gene will be reproduced only if the other genes do their jobs. Thanks to this interdependence, genes in animals and plants jointly enforce laws of inheritance, ensuring that selection only favours genes that benefit their bearers. Similarly, complex multicellular organisms would not exist today if not for an early instance of cooperation. Around 2 billion years ago, a single-celled microbe, an archaeon, engulfed another single-celled microbe, a bacterium. Instead of being consumed, the bacterium survived and multiplied in its host and provided it with an important service. The archaeon and the bacteria soon became interdependent. The bacteria became unable to venture outside, so they could reproduce only when the archaeon did. To reproduce, these bacteria had to help their host cells, which they did by efficiently metabolizing energy-rich compounds, enabling host cells to grow larger and evolve larger genomes. The descendants of the helper bacteria are now mitochondria, the powerhouses of the cell in multicellular organisms such as animals and plants. The first multicellular organisms also formed by cooperation, this time amongst cells within clonal clumps. Each clump arose from a sexually produced, genetically unique cell. Because each clump cells are genetically identical, each cell's reproductive success benefited from helping its neighbours. Cells within clumps eventually began to take on different roles, which required increasingly complex modes of cooperation, leading to different tissues and organs within animals, plants and fungi. In animals with billions of cells, Cells, however, mutant cells can sometimes appear that cheat by multiplying cancerously rather than doing their jobs. Animals have evolved defences to destroy cheater cells. Animal societies have also evolved mechanisms to ensure cooperation and prevent cheating. For example, social honeybees solve the problem of reproductive competition by only having one reproductive female, the queen. The queen's daughters, the workers, are more closely related to the queen's eggs than their sister's eggs. Workers therefore destroy the eggs of any other worker that tries to cheat by producing her own eggs rather than helping the queen reproduce. Finally, cooperation also occurs between members of different species. Plants could colonise the land only because fungi serve them as roots. Coral reefs exist thanks to cooperation between photosynthetic algae and a coral. The algae provide their host coral with photosynthesised sugars, while the coral provides the algae with secure shelter. As we've seen, Dr. Lee's research highlights the many ways that evolution by natural selection favours cooperation. It helps us understand how natural selection has given rise to the beauty, diversity and abundance of life we see in nature today.